Hey YouTube, I'm back. We survived, you know, the great flood of 17. Um, whoo! <laughs> I'm still tired. <laughs> you know, I spent uh, two days with a friend of mine, a, a new homesteader coming out here from California by way of Arizona, um, moving railroad ties and dirt and stuff like that. And uh, I was pretty beat after that. Then the rains came. And then that night I was moving railroad ties and bags of gravel and <laughs> shuffling and digging um, by myself. And uh, then for the last two days, I've been working a shovel, trying to fill in uh, the furrows that were made. Can you see those furrows down there? I don't know if you can with this view. Um, you know, the rain, it was just such a huge rain. We have ditches on both sides of all our roads. Um, but this rain just overran those ditches. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to set this so I don't have to keep holding it. My arms are tired. <laughs> uh, anyway, we, uh, it overran the ditches and just once it hit this gravel road with such force, it uh, cut furrows and channels and stuff. And so I've got to fill them in so that just a regular rain doesn't run down those furrows and make them into chasms, right? And then yes, I also have to address uh, the places where the water came out of the ditches. And we started doing that yesterday. A friend of mine came over and he has one of those new Kubotas. Um, looks like a, a really big riding lawnmower, but it has a bucket and a backhoe and all these attachments on it. And that thing did a lot of work yesterday, improving some ditches where they really needed improving. Um, that's mostly what we used it for. We used the backhoe option on it. Um, and then we used the bucket to carry some gravel because a lot of this gravel just washed down to low places. Um, and so, yeah, I've been getting on it. <laughs> it's only, what is it today, third day? Yeah, Tuesday. <laughs> I'm ready for a Shabbat. <laughs> I'm ready for a break. But, hey, you got to do it, right? You got to get out there and do the hard things. If you want to be a homesteader, if you want to be a neo-pioneer, then you got to get out there and homestead and pioneer. Right? It's not like I got money to pay somebody or a whole crew to come out here and fix it for me. I guess there are people out there like that, right? You got the money. Hey, if you got the money to pay people to do it, good on you. You planned well. <laughs> um, I didn't. Um, and so, hey, that's what I've been doing. I'm stinky. I'm sweaty. I'm sore. But you know what? I'm working for me. I'm working for me and us. And uh, I'm working to make Shofar Mountain better. Uh, got to work with brethren, you know, people who think and act and believe like I do. And that beats the heck to me out of sitting in some cubicle and making pretty good money. I made pretty good money there for a while. Um, this is better. I'd rather be out here on my own doing it for myself, stopping when I want to. Um, yeah, and when I get to work with people, working with people that want to do this. All right, so homesteading. If you think you're into it, you know, and I'll just say this, some people probably get mad. I'm not trying to make you mad. I think a lot of people like the idea of homesteading. I think a lot of people like the idea of being a off-grid neo-pioneer. Um, and I get a lot of nasty comments here on YouTube whenever I say we're off-grid. Well, how are you putting a video up if you're off-grid? Yeah, you know, you can define it however you want. We don't have any uh, municipal utilities coming onto this land. We have no uh, electricity wires running onto the land, cable, TV wires, water lines, nothing like that. Yeah, whatever. Um, but I don't think one has to be off grid to be a true homesteader. I think you could be on the grid and be a homesteader. I think it's fine. You ought to have a plan, you know, what you're going to do with your homestead when the grid goes down. Uh, but it would certainly make life easier if you had electricity coming on. But, hey, we do what we can where we are with what we got, right? And so I encourage you all just to do the best you can and get out there and start doing stuff. Because someday you may be living this life whether you plan to do it or not. <laughs> You know, the whole system falls apart. I, I like the idea, I like living this way, um, just because I do, I enjoy it, it's peaceful. Other than that jet that just flew over, I was gonna tell you, listen to this, but I can still hear the jet. 
It's disturbing my shalom. <laughs> but you know, it's peaceful out here. It's quiet. There's birds. Uh, the pace of life is slower. It's physically harder. And that's probably a good thing, so I don't turn into some fat roly-poly 50-something-year-old. Um, here, now you can listen. Listen. That's what I hear. Nothing. So, I encourage you all to do what you can. Get used to physical labor. Uh, start doing it. Start learning your way around a shovel and a pick and gloves, things like that. Um, work in your backyard, plant your garden, hook up a little solar system, catch your rainwater. You know, do all those things um, because you'll learn with everything you do. And don't pay somebody to do it. Do it yourself. You can do this stuff. All right. Hey, we're having fun out here on the homestead. I hope you are too. I'll see you out there.